past debt. As an artist, illustrator and writer, Oliver Jeffers is internationally known for connecting with children. And today he's helping to give young asylum seekers an opportunity for their voice to be heard and face to be seen by decision makers here. At Stormont, pictures are going to go on display later as part of an exhibition called Scene. Each of the pieces of art features drawings of what matters to the child, framed by a portrait of them drawn by Oliver. He got together with the young refugees on Saturday at an event organised by the Alliance MLA, Kate Nicholl, and we were invited along to speak to all those involved, including Oliver Jeffers himself. So, coloured pencils, crayons, but these are Posca markers, so these are paint markers. Uh, As an artist and author, Oliver Jeffers is used to using crayons and colours to tell stories. But here in this church hall in the middle of Belfast, he's encouraging others to use those pens and pencils to say something about themselves. So, my idea for this exhibition is that I draw an equally good portrait of each of you, and then you decorate it. There are dozens of refugee children here, ready to put together pictures that will be both their creation and Oliver's. It's going to be a visual exhibition that'll hang in the, uh, the Long Gallery in Stormont for a few weeks called Seen. And it's because the, a lot of the kids that are here, they, they feel unseen, they feel invisible. And so it's about them. It's me drawing a, uh, a quick portrait in my uh, very simple style <laughs> and then uh, allowing them to, to, to decorate that with objects, visuals that, that they value. And so it is, it's about being seen, it's about uh, them, them feeling like that they're, they're accepted and that they're, they're, they're visible and, and relevant and that they matter. Um, and of course the irony is that it's, it's going into this political headquarters of Northern Ireland where it's not really going to be seen because our government refuses to sit. And I think there's, there's, a, there's a kind of a beautiful, terrible irony in that. Orange is inside, yeah? Yellow, and you can like at the end... Uh... So what have you been drawing, Kevin? A football. A football, so this is this is what you like most of all. Mm -hmm. These are some very good pictures I'm seeing, actually. This is some very good drawing. Thanks. Um, I'm drawing a sun and I'm gonna draw here some people. Like, I, it's, I'm drawing people because it's like a sunny day. What are you drawing? I, I'm drawing a girl. Drawing a girl? Yeah. And is that you, or who is it? Me. <laughs> You can probably tell from the sound alone, but all around this hall, there are some very excited children. Certainly, I'm looking at some very excited faces as they sit down to start this artwork. And of course, for some of these families who are stuck in an accommodation that can be small, can be relatively cramped, particularly for a family, this is quite an event. They don't have the opportunity to get involved in something like this very often. For the ladies and for the kids, for them like living in the hotels and a, a very small places no area for kids to play so whenever they come here they find the space and they find the support Aris Farah is education coordinator for the Annika group which works with the families we have a family they have um, five kids uh, one of them 13 years old Hassan his autistic child they're here for around a year and a half and Hassan stay at home, do nothing. His mom is so concerned about even his mental health and his well-being because like lately when he see him in the morning go to school, he lock himself in, in a dark room and he didn't talk and do anything. And it's, it's very long time for him like staying with no education. His other sister, uh, Fatima, he, she came here 15 and now she turned 16 with no school at all. Yeah. But why not? Why, why is there no education? It's, problem it's going here for like the children with with learning disabilities there is lots of children wait for the school places perfect so there's your square for drawing in so this is going to be the actual piece of art that everyone's going to see it's probably no surprise for these families in search of a permanent home that many of the pictures being drawn feature houses that's something not lost on this mum who's originally from eritrea <laughs> Yeah, she said uh, for the kids, for the school, it, it's everything is, is nice. But the, the bad thing for them is staying in the hotel. Into Kamal to come to hotel. One year now, uh, she has four kids, her and her husband, and the four kids, they will live in one hotel room. Today, my doctor is, uh, she writes this here. Yeah. So. I, I love you, mum. It says, I wish we I had a house. Yes. 
and that that's it's and there's a, and there's nice. a picture there's a picture of a house that's been drawn and this is your daughter who's who's drawn yeah, this. She's the right in now. <laughs> Make sure everybody has written their name and your photograph with Oliver for your portrait. The tables here have been littered with bright and colourful drawings, but they were just practice pictures and they're being cleared away now and blank pages put in their place for people to create their own artwork. And each of these children is going to have something put on display at Stormont which shows what they love. And around the artwork that they create, there's going to be an image of them drawn by Oliver Jeffers. Sure, Chris, sure, Chris, your, your picture, come show him. Uh, it's finished, it's really good. <laughs> I don't know. Why, which one is your picture? Uh, oh, that's mine. That's not yours. <laughs> but that's a good that's one. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, that's mine, that's mine. So you have gone for football? <laughs> yeah. I and like, I like football. The other thing is, is there's fire coming off the of football. Is that an indication you can kick pretty hard? Yeah, I, I, I kick pretty good. <laughs> I, I <laughs> Describe some of the other pictures to me here. Which ones do you like? Uh, I like the one with the avocado. <laughs> yeah, I like that one too. It's pretty nicely yeah, drawn and as well. Also, look, you can see the colours, they're pretty bright. How do you feel about Oliver Jeffers drawing you? Drawing me? Yeah. I, I have feel special. Do you think you'll do a good job? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Is he gonna do a good job? And he said maybe. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, you are doing a good job. <laughs> I, I appreciate your confidence. <laughs> You know, Oliver is a very famous writer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now they feel they are a part of the, their favourite story. Afra is originally from Sudan. Belfast has come to represent possibility for her, as well as a future for her family. You know, as a parent, all of us is overwhelmed about the life and to secure enough stuff for them, for the kids, but to share them their feeling, to make them express their deep feeling inside their soul. My son said verbally, Mom, this paper is not enough for me to express what I love. So thank you really for what you're doing today in this workshop. We are deeply appreciated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome to Planet Earth. At their core, many of Oliver Jeffers' books are about being human. There are people. One people is a person. And that's what he wants this exhibition of children's portraits to be about. I think the way in which, as society, we treat people who are uh, being forced to move is kind of a born and it needs to be vastly improved upon. And it's almost a self-framing object where the complaint is that people are coming and just um, and taking and not offering. And, and there's, that's to a degree true because we don't let them contribute. We don't let these kids go to school often. We don't let the adults work. And I think there needs to be massive policy change where we allow people to be fully contributing members of society and treat them with the empathy that they deserve because you never know, one day it might be us that needs to, to leave our homes. And we would hope that we will be treated with a degree of humanity. That is Oliver Jeffers. And the whole event was organised after a conversation between him and the Alliance MLA, Kate Nicholl, who joins us now. Uh, morning, Kate. Morning, Chris. That was lovely. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for inviting us down to, to, to speak to the children. Just give us an idea of how this all came about with Oliver Jeffers. Uh, well, I, I met Oliver at an event in March last year, um, and I'm such a big fan of his work. We have quite a lot of his books in my house, which I read to my son, um, and he cares about the planet, and he cares about asylum seekers, you know, issues that I care about and I work on. And I was talking to him about this, and he invited me down to his studio to have a chat about, you know, how we could maybe do something together. Um and yeah, I just, I, I wish I could take credit for all of this, but the, the idea of the artwork um, uh, was his. Uh, I just match made. Uh, I just match made. <laughs> I put him in touch with Annika, um, who I do a lot of work with and are just wonderful, such an amazing collective. Um, and they, they were a match made in heaven. And this workshop came about and they had the ideas for the artwork, Oliver and his team. But then he said, you know, 
we need to show it somewhere. And I said, well, I, I, can, I, can, I can book the Long Gallery, sir. We've got the exhibition um, launching today. I'm so excited about it. But also we've got plans for it to, to hopefully do a bit of a roadshow around Northern Ireland as well, because we want as many people to see, to see it as possible. Yeah, and you've done me a great favour and that you've, you've shared with me one of the final pictures. What do you make of the portraits that have, that have been put together then? Oh, like they're just, they are just so moving. Um, and and it's it's wonderful because so many of these asylum seekers are seen, if they are seen, it's as asylum seeker refugee children. But what Oliver has been able to create is allowing the children to, to put forward a portrayal of how they want to be seen and how they see themselves. So you've got a range of things from kind of homes and the, the political, you know, freedom and opportunity and jobs. And then you have, just really lovely pictures of of a football or an avocado <laughs> and Oliver's then taken a picture of each child and he's drawn a portrait around their artworks so or it's like they're holding a picture of how they want to be seen to the world and they're going to get that picture um to keep uh, at the end of the exhibition which is it's just wonderful. And he has been so generous. He provided all that those art materials um, and the pens and the papers and his time. He was up until uh, quite late on, on Saturday night doing them um, uh, so that we could get them to storm it on Sunday. And yeah, I'm just in awe of him because he's he's been so generous um, with his time and I think it's going to be really impactful. We, we heard the frustration from some families there and we have spoken to the Home Office who say that the UK has got a proud history of providing protection for those who genuinely need it through safe and legal routes. And they do say that they put support mechanisms in place, including an integration loan for refugees to pay for things like rent, education and training for work. But But it's obvious that some feel that they still aren't getting that. No, I mean, they are being failed. Uh, they, they are completely being failed. You you meet with uh, any the people in contingency accommodation. You heard that in, in your package. There are uh, four or five people in a family living in one cramped room for up to a year. People get this idea that it's, it's hotel luxury living. It is not living with your entire family for a year in a small room where your children can't play. Some of the children have special educational needs. They are deeply traumatized. They can't access education. They can't access services. Um, not enough is being done. And even if you don't have empathy, <laughs> even if you if you buy into sort of negative narratives around asylum seekers and refugees, the reality is that about 85% of these people are going to get papers, they're going to become citizens here. And so we should be doing everything we can support, do to support them into work, into accessing um, education and services. Kate Nichol, thank you very, sorry, Kate Nichol, thank you very much indeed. It's half past eight. Sorry 